Hey, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so today I'm just going to talk about uh, probably some random stuff. I don't really know, but uh, I thought maybe a little bit of the focus today will be on Israel. Okay, so let's listen to a little bit of Dr. Todd Baker. If you want to come and join us in person, if you do uh, desire to be a member of our small congregation, then we ask that you look at our doctrinal statement and agree with it. I'm going to have to revise that doctrinal statement uh, here soon to affirm that marriage is between one man and one woman. Uh, the Bible nor this ministry endorses so-called same-sex marriage. Uh, so uh, that's that. Well, okay, bef before I say anything, I don't know why you'd have to have a doctrinal statement. Um, the Bible should be your doctoral doctoral statement. What you know? But whatever, whatever. Um, then you have to change your doctoral statement. That's a little bit iffy, isn't it? I mean, you're wavering a little bit. You're not standing firm if you're changing it. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I. I don't know. I don't know, it's something, I don't know why you would need it to begin with. And then you have to change it. Then you got the Word of God that clearly speaks against, um, you know, homosexuality. It's a sin. So what's the big deal here? You got to change your doctoral statement because you just now realized it was a sin? And, you know, there's numerous examples to give. Um, you know, one example should be enough, right? If you search the word womankind, thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Uh, that means it's no good, right? Of course, there's Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, where these, they were all perverts. Right? Going after strange flesh. Right? And, I mean, that's the world that we're in now, isn't it? It's interesting to me, I was thinking about this, uh, how, you know, this happened way back when, and now it's happening again. And... There's just going to be no choice but for God to destroy the whole place. And <clears throat> it's interesting because in those cities, Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them, there wasn't even ten righteous in those cities. In the days of Noah, there was only eight souls saved. So also when the Son of Man comes in the clouds of heaven... Will he find faith on the earth? It's interesting because if God allowed things to play out as they are, there would come a point where there would be nobody saved. Except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. It's just interesting, okay? And then, of course... <clears throat> I mean, to me, the most obvious place is Romans chapter 1. I mean, you can't get around this stuff. I've had discussions with people about this. This is not new territory. And it, it's interesting to me. It seems like the people that get most offended is those that are not homosexuals i get the impression that the homosexuals know that they're sinners but those friends of homosexuals want to defend them and encourage them and they're the ones that get offended that's just my general observation okay 
Now, of course, in Romans chapter 1, there's, let's see, you know, through the lust of their own hearts to, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature <clears throat> all right you can't figure this out is this too hard yeah i wonder you know half 90 nine percent of these people that go to church have they even read this and of course i think they have they just don't believe in likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their heir which was meat they're having stinky sex disgusting stinky sex with one another and that's what the world that we're in right now women with women men with men and just like it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. Right? Obviously, I think uh, when God destroyed those cities, it sort of um, minimized the homosexuality that was in the world, but then it's, it slowly built itself back up to where now people are openly I mean it's strange it's very strange to me you know I mean you have to understand I was born in 1970 you know in the 70s and 80s we call somebody a faggot if they acted a little bit queer well for some reason you can't say the word faggot I don't get it. It doesn't. It's, it just doesn't make any sense to me. You can't say faggot. Why? When did this happen? Faggot just means uh, homosexual. We didn't say homosexuals back then. A faggot and a homosexual is the same thing. How is it one that's better than the other? I can't. It doesn't make any sense to me at all, unless you're just making stuff up. And that's what I think. People are just making, oh, you can't say that, but you can say this. Well, I'm, I don't want to say gay. Are these people really gay? I don't think they're gay at all. They're faggots, queers, and homosexuals. They're not gay. They're murderers. Liars. They're wicked. All of them. It, I think it's, it really, <laughs> we shouldn't say, we shouldn't pretend like it's not a sin. Right? Because, number one, we're all sinners. And number two, we all need a Savior. Well, if you tell these people, well, you're not sinning. It's okay. God. God will forgive you, or, or I don't know what they say, honestly, to, to encourage them. But well, no matter what, you, we shouldn't encourage them, right? Who, knowing the, the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Everybody knows the judgment of God. Everybody knows that's wickedness. And they're encouraging people to do wicked things. It's, it's crazy. It's a crazy world we live in. And we shouldn't be encouraging people to sin. No matter what the sin is. Look, face it. We're all sinners. And so, I, I don't know what the problem is. Unless, of course, you're so full of pride... You don't. You want to pretend like you're not a sinner. And look, I get it. You, 
we don't want to go around condemning people for their sin. I, I get that. But then, if you got that, if you understood that, then why would you say, hey, this is my friend, she's a lesbian, or so-and-so is a lesbian? You're condemning them right there. Oh, he's gay. Oh, well, you, that's, you're condemning them. I don't refer to anybody as a lesbian. Oh, this is my friend, uh, you know, so-and-so. She's a lesbian. I mean, that's, that's insane. This is my friend, Joe. He's a liar. And this is my friend, Sally. She's a whore. <laughs> you know, I don't refer to people like that. That's insanity. I don't, I, I don't care about this stuff. I mean, really, I do, but let's move on. This, this is all disgusting crap, in my opinion. Uh, I forget where I was at. Oh, this guy right here. Doctor. He's not my doctor. I don't know. What, he takes pride in elevating himself because he's a doctor. He's superior to mankind. Is that what it is? I'm just lowly Jimmy. I'm just a low... Lowly Christian. I'm, I ain't nobody. I just believe what the Bible says. That's it. I ain't got, I ain't smart enough to go to school. I learn all these doctrines and masters and this and that. Don't know all that stuff. I was, uh, I was in high school for six and a half years and I still failed. <laughs> they told me to get out. Forget it. They said, get out of here. That's enough. Can't figure it out in six and a half years. I don't know if anybody's been in high school for as long as me and still didn't graduate. I'm as dumb as they get. Of course, I'll tell you that it turns out years later I realized that this was a blessing because I didn't care about what they were teaching. I wanted to learn... But what they were teaching just didn't interest me. Okay, let's listen. That's that. Also, uh, we are a ministry not only committed to the sound teaching of God's word, emphasizing the Jewish roots of the oh, faith, what? but we also... Emphasizing what? The Jewish roots of the faith? Wait a second, you're a Jew. You're not, you're not one of us. You, let me play that again. Endorses so-called same-sex marriage. Uh, so uh, that's that. Also, uh, we are a ministry not only committed to the sound teaching of God's word, emphasizing the Jewish roots of the faith, but we all... Jewish roots of the faith, okay. All right, so this is... I'm not going to get into what's going on in the Middle East and the gay pride stuff that they have over there in his beloved city. I won't get into that because it's all disgusting. I've talked all I want to talk about on that subject. But I do want to talk about the promises that were given to Abraham and his seed. So if we do a word search for Abraham's seed and we can Oh, we can, uh, you know, what, what, and then, and then God, thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore thou and thy seed after thee in their generation, and so on and so forth here. I want to skip to the New Testament because if there's any uncertainty in the Old Testament, it is made clear, revealed plainly. In the New Testament. All right, if you have any doubt when you're reading this, all right, it is revealed in the New Testament. So let's go to the New Testament. And this should clarify it. I mean, it should be beyond obvious. There should be no ambiguity, no confusion whatsoever. Galatians 3, now to Abraham and a seed were the promises made. Okay, 
Sums it up pretty good, doesn't it? Now to Abraham and his seed where the promise was made, he saith not in the seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. Now hold that thought right there. Now, you understand that it's because Abraham offered Isaac, his son, to be a sacrifice. He was going to offer, I should say. Did I Forgive me if I misspeak. He was going to offer Isaac, and then God stopped him. And instead of he, God offered his son as the perfect sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Okay, And because Abraham was going to, God made the promise to him and his seed, which is Christ, who was the replacement for Isaac to be the perfect offering to God for the sins of the whole world. And this stems from what happened in Genesis 3. Because Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, God put curses on the man, the woman, and the serpent. And he and God said to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Let me read this again. I will put enmity division between evil and the people of God. All right? Between Christ and the saved and I'm sorry, <laughs> between thy seed, between the unsaved, I said that all wrong. I apologize. Now it's right here. I will put division between Satan and God between Satan's people or I maybe I said let me try this again I will put enmity between thee the unsaved and the woman which is the saved and between thy seed talking to the serpent meaning his people the unsaved people and her seed meaning Christ and all that are Christ's. Okay, the saved people. Right? The seed of the serpent, if you will, are all the unsaved. All those that are not born of God. Okay? All those that are of her seed, which is the woman, which is Christ, because Christ came, was born of a woman, there was no earthly man that contributed to the formation of Jesus in the womb of Mary. Right? It was the Holy Spirit that caused her to be with child. All right. And so that this serpent seed is the unsaved and her seed is Christ and all those that are Christ. This shall bruise the serpent's head and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is denoting the end of the world, the, the fulfillment of the separation. Right, and I will put enmity between thee and the, and the woman. Are the fulfillment of the separation between good and evil. All right, because they ate from the tree the knowledge of good and evil, knowing good and evil, there because this happened, there's going to be enmity or separation that's going to be fulfilled when Jesus stomps his foot 
on the head of the serpent destroying evil forever okay and of course this is echoed all throughout the Bible all the way to the very end and just to give you a couple examples here in case you didn't know I do this all the time so if you've watched me I'm sure that you're familiar with this Psalm 110 the Lord said unto my Lord sit out my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool now this is a directly parallel with Genesis 3 verse 15 and thou shalt bruise his heel all right again in Acts 2 I know there's other places I'm not doing all of them I just got like three of them that I remember that I memorize here until I make thy foes thy footstool uh oh am I wrong uh oh uh oh I forget there it is how, how in the world did I forget here let me do it this way that way in case I do this again until I make thy foes thy footstool right and then of course first Corinthians 15 for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet so at the end of the world what happens we are lifted up and fire comes down from God and devours all the unsaved people right that's God stomping his foot on the head of the serpent okay so now if you understand that then perhaps you can understand the promises that were made to Abraham and his seed and then ultimately the consequences and fulfillment of this these promises okay now in verse uh, in verse 29 in Galatians chapter 3 and if you be Christ then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise okay let me put it this way so I am Christ I'm one of Christ's people okay and because I'm one of God's people I am Abraham's seed through Christ and heir according to the promise that was made and that's eternal life and again this stems all the way back to Genesis 3 verse 15 where God is going to destroy all evil forever. Okay. Now, if you understand that, then begs the question what in the H E double hockey sticks is this guy talking about? Jewish roots? What are you talking about? It's not supported by the Bible at all. The idea, there's nothing in the Bible that I, I could point to to say, hey, that supports his idea because there's nothing. All right. In fact, let's go to, let's, first of all, let's, let me start here. Let me start. just so there's no uncertainty in 1st Thessalonians 2 says who both killed the Lord Jesus who's this talk who's who who's who the Jews the Jews who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us and they please not God and are contrary to all men this guy here is contrary to all men. He's an enemy. All right. Oh, what? These are God's people? 
No. Well, what makes you think that? Where do you get that idea? From John Hagee? Who told you that? Because you're not getting it from the Bible at all. Have you never read the Bible? You're an expert, a scholar, a doctor, and you don't know this? Well, there's something wrong with your heart. Obviously, if, if you had read John chapter 8, for example, Jesus is having a direct conversation. He's right there in front of their faces having a conversation with them, and they don't understand. And it's interesting to me. It's just very, very, very interesting to me. Okay, They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. They, they didn't understand nothing. And that's the world that we're in right now. These people don't understand nothing. And if there's one quote in here, one verse in here that's... Uh, very well this i love this one if the son therefore shall make you free ye shall be free indeed now when he says i know that ye are abraham's seed he's talking about physical which has no relevance at all but ye seek to kill me because my word has no place in you i speak that which i have seen with my father and you do that which ye have seen with your father. Then there's a difference. Right? You've, you've heard uh, the Bible verse, uh, rightly dividing the word of truth. Study to show thyself approved. Unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth here's here's a good test for you right here are you able to rightly divide the word of truth or are you so is your heart so hardened that you can't see it this is really a matter of worldview if you have the worldview that people with dark hair and a big nose are god's elect God's chosen people you're not going to see this because you don't believe and by your own words you're admitting that you're not one of God's people it's shameful but that's the reality okay And the answer is, if Abraham is our proper, and Jesus says unto them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth, which I have heard of God. And this did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. He's standing right in front of them. He's right face to face with them. They can't understand nothing. They can't even hear what he's saying. Because of their worldview. Hey, we're, we got dark hair and big noses. We don't need to do nothing. We were, we're saved just by being born of a woman. See, they're, they're completely ignorant. They don't have any faith at all in God. They have faith in themselves. Hey, I was born, and I was born one of God's people, so I don't have to believe, don't have to, nothing. And of course, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Just from a logical standpoint, it makes no sense, but 
This is just a, another delusion that people fall under because they don't believe God. All right, and of course, this gentleman here is one of those that thinks people are saved just because they were born with dark hair and a big nose. I mean, honestly, isn't that it? And you got Brit Hadashasha, Hadashasha, Hadasha, and we're of Jewish roots. I thought your name was Todd Baker. <laughs> It doesn't matter, whatever. Okay, so why would you think that there's a group of faggots and perverts over there in the Middle East that are saved no matter what they do? They're saved simply for being born of a woman. That's not biblical at all. There's no Bible verse to support that. There's never been an example of somebody being saved simply for being born of a woman. Jesus specifically says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Right? See, he's not lying. He's not lying at all, but you are claiming that he, that Jesus is a liar when you say you don't have to be born of the spirit. To be God's people. To be saved. To enter the kingdom of God. To see the kingdom of God. So either you're a liar or Jesus is a liar. When you make this claim that people over in the Middle East are God's people. <laughs> and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to place my bets on God. Huh? I'm going all in with what God says. And I'm going to count you as a liar. All right, now, um, it's, it's also important to note that this Israel that's over in the Middle East, it was not formed until 1948. It's not, it's not biblical Israel at all. But people are, you know, we've gotten so past beyond this point to where people, I guess, want to ignore that this is a, a historical fact. I mean, you know, if you were born in 1948, I think you'd be, what, 76 years old now? Um, and most people in the world are not 76 years old yet. Right, and of course, uh, all these people in the world today—they go to seminary school when they're 19 years old. They got the snot running down their face, right? And then they get taught by professors, teachers, experts, scholars, theologians, doctors, and they're told, "Well, yeah, this." Over there to Israel. I mean, to me, it just it is so reminiscent of Mormonism. You tell all these kids, "Hey, look, kids, over here in the Middle East, we got Israel. Now look at here in the Old Testament, we got Israel. See, no understanding at all. Just pure brainwashing, pure indoctrination. Brainwashing is what it is." Not challenging, not questioning anything at all. Pure insanity. Okay. So real quickly, let me point, let me go. And I love this. To me, this is, it makes it real simple and easy to see. All right, if you had any doubts, any confusion whatsoever, this ought to clear it up. And honestly, I don't know how you could still be confused. 
But just in case, in Exodus 19, God says, oh, God says to Moses, now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. All right, just a side note here. Satan is not a god, and the earth does not belong to Satan. All right, I know there are liars and deceivers, and they're out in full force, making that claim yeah, but it's not true satan is not a god and you're violating the first very first commandment when you make the claim that satan is a god all right the very first commandment the very first one you are guilty of when you say satan is a god all right it's as if these people have no understanding whatsoever none they don't believe a word that the Word of God says. They worship Satan, and they're obsessed by Satan. The only thing that interests them is Satan. Anything Satan, Lucifer, oh, that's exciting. They don't care about God at all. They don't care about the Word of God whatsoever. Now, I, that's just a side note, okay? All right. And then also this, uh, I want you to uh, just keep this right here just for a few seconds keep that in the back of your head peculiar treasure okay for all the earth is mine and you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation these are the words which thou which thou shalt speak to unto the children of Israel all right so that's what happened right Moses spoke those words to the children of Israel, not 1948 Israel, not them people at all. All right, now in First Peter chapter 2, notice the parallel here. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. See, a kingdom of priests, a chosen generation, right? An holy nation, see that? Huh? An holy nation, an holy nation? A peculiar people. What? A peculiar treasure. Huh? You see the parallels? That you should show forth the praises of Him, talking about those of us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? Those of us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. We that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are the children of Israel. We are the people of God. We are the chosen people of God. All right, we are a peculiar, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. There's not two nations. There's not two nations at all. I think people are willfully ignorant when they dispute this. Now, remember when Jesus said, uh, straight is the way and narrow He's, I can't remember. I butcher this every single time. Straight is the gate, narrow is the way. Wait, wait, let me back up one here. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, broad is the way, that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, narrow is the way, which leads unto life, and few there be that find it. All right, so... The way is very narrow. Now these people, that's well, if you're a Jew, you, you're born with dark hair and a big nose. I mean, theoretically, I got dark hair and a big nose. The older I get, the bigger my nose gets, it seems like. 
I don't know. Don't matter. Don't mean nothing. I mean, how big does my nose have to get before I'm saved? Is that the key to salvation? I'll get a nose job right now if that's what it takes. Seriously. Why would these guys be saved just because they were born with dark hair and a big nose? Seriously. They're, they wouldn't be. It's, that's not biblical at all. It's always been about faith. That's never changed. It's always been about faith. There's never been a time when people have been saved simply by being born. And then real, real quickly, if I could, just let me just say this, that the people, when Moses delivered the people out of the wickedness of Egypt, he didn't deliver. It, it wasn't just people of, it wasn't just Hebrews. That's the point I want to say. It wasn't just Hebrews. Are you saying they weren't saved? They were saved. They were rescued out of the wickedness of Egypt, and they weren't even Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11. Here's your evidence that it, it, it's always been about faith. All right. It's always been about, about faith. Uh, faith is the, hub, the substance of things hoped for, for, and the evidence of things not seen. Through faith, by faith Abel, by faith Enoch. Without faith it is impossible. By faith Noah became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. By faith Abraham, by faith he's a John. Through faith Sarah. And she judged him faithful. They all died in faith. By faith Abraham. By faith Isaac. By faith Jacob. By faith Joseph. By faith Moses. By faith Moses. By faith he forsook Egypt. Through faith he kept the Passover. By faith they passed through the Red Sea. By faith the walls of Jericho. By faith the harlot Rahab. Who through faith subdued kingdoms. And these all having obtained a good report through faith. Received not the promise God, having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. So it's always been about faith. See these yellow dilly-dallies here on the right? That's every single time the word faith is used in Hebrews 11. It's, it's overly abundant. It's overly, it's overwhelming. It's obvious. It's always been about faith. That's never changed. It's never been different. There's never been a, another way to get saved. It's always been about faith. And real quickly, if I can, before I forget, let me just make one more example. All right. For by grace... Are you saved through faith? All right, that's not changed. All right. And not of yourselves. That's never, it's never been by yourself. <laughs> Nobody, nobody's ever saved themselves. It's never happened. It's always been a gift of God. Nobody's ever taken it. It's never been by works. And nobody will be able to boast. It's always been by grace. Let's see if I can find something to. Oh, there we go. In Hosea. For I desired mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. Mercy. Go learn what that means. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance, to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? We are 100% at the mercy of God. That's never changed. It's always been the case. We've always been saved by faith or by grace, excuse me, by grace through faith. That's never changed. Nobody's ever been saved because they had dark hair 
and a big nose. That had never been the case. That's not found anywhere at all in the Bible. All right? Your only chance for eternal life is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. Now, what I was going to point to earlier when I first showed that, I kind of, you know, to make a extremely short story long, uh, I wanted to, and then I forgot what it was. I forgot what I was going to say. The coffee's wearing out. Hold on a second. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. Uh, let me do it this. Let me do this here, right? Here. Okay. The nation of God, or the kingdom of God? Excuse me. The kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. See, oh my goodness, this is such incredible stuff, man. It's incredible. Once your eyes are opened and you see it, it's amazing. See, back in the Old Testament, there was one country of God. When Moses pulled his people out of the wickedness of Egypt, there was still one country, one group of the people of God. Right? So within that group of people, that country, was the kingdom of God. Outside of that country did not exist the kingdom of God. All right, So they were essentially, effectively influenced by Satan, which is the spirit void of God. All right, so now here comes Jesus. And I remember as a kid, the big event was Reagan telling Gorbachev, tear down that wall. I think he slammed his fist on a podium. Tear down that wall. Or tear down this wall or tear down that wall. He was emphatic. And people loved it. And they tore down that wall. And it was big news. It's like 1980 or whatever it was. Well, this it's interesting because that's exactly, well, not exactly, but it's similar to what Jesus did. He tore down that wall. Now, the kingdom of God is available to whosoever believes in him. All right, and this parallels what we read in Revelation 20, when Satan is uh, put into prison for a thousand years. All right, I forget what it says now. Can you believe that? I forget what it says. All right. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. That's, so now the kingdom of God is available to whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. He tore down that wall. Now, when Jesus returns, when he comes in the clouds of heaven, what happens? Anybody know? Well, I'll tell you what happens. We are lifted up into the air just like what we read in Matthew 24 Mark 13 Luke 21 and also in 1st Thessalonians 4 where we read the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout of the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So we're lifted up out of this world. Now the and we're, the kingdom of God is that's that's the kingdom of God is in us all getting lifted up out of this world. 
the kingdom of God in us at the same time are getting pulled out of this world just like it was in the Old Testament when there was the kingdom of God and then outside was not the kingdom of God. Now the kingdom of God is completely pulled up out of this world. And so this is why we read at the end of the thousand years, which is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Right? This is why we read that Satan is let loose to go out to deceive, to gather together the unsaved at our feet. And this goes all the way back to Genesis 3. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. You see, Satan is the, the whole purpose. Satan is going out to deceive, to gather together the unsaved at our feet. And they went up on the breath of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city. Where is the beloved city? The beloved city is above. Remember John 14? Jesus says, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and, re and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. Right? In my Father's house are many mansions. And then, of course, we read in Revelation 21. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down. From God out of heaven. We know that the new Jerusalem, the city of God, the beloved city is above. All right? It tells us that the beloved city comes down from God. In the very next chapter. So that beloved city has to be above. And so this has to be the moment when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and we are pulled up. The kingdom of God is pulled up out of this world. And fire comes down from God and devours them, and it shall bruise his heel. And thou shalt bruise his heel, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is the fulfillment of what we read in Genesis 3, verse 15. This world is destroyed. Right? To teach anything else is insanity. It's illogical. I mean, really. You know, what are you going to say? That you're down on the earth? That the city of God is down on the earth? And the fire... You're underestimating the fire. You really are. You're underestimating the fire of God. To say anything else. Alright. And I'm going to close this out. Oh, hold on a second. Let me go here. I don't know what I just did there. No idea, but I just want to close this out, finish it on this right here, because people are underestimating the power of God and the fire that is reserved for this world, right? We know that this world was destroyed by water. But now, this world is reserved unto fire, and people are underestimating that fire. You, there's not going to be, if you're going to be on the earth, you're in trouble, buddy. You're in big trouble. Because this ain't just fire. This ain't campfire. All right? This ain't bonfire stuff. Right? This is the fire that comes down from God. And it's not even the fire that the the fire and brimstone that we see that happened to Sodom and Gomorrah that we have evidence of today. Consider this. Think about this. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise. This is not somebody dropping a trash can in the middle of the night. Okay, this is a great noise. Great means great. And the elements shall melt. The elements shall melt. I don't think we can even comprehend this. The heat is going to be so 
extreme, everything is going to melt. The earth is going to melt and the works that are therein are going to be burned up. It's going to be more than just hot. The whole place is going to dissolve. And are you going to are you putting yourself here on the earth when this happens? Are you saying that the city of the beloved city is on earth when this happens? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. We're going to be pulled up out of this world when this happens. Make no mistake about it. Okay? The beloved city right now is above. That is what we're putting our hope into. The city that is above that Jesus has went to and he is preparing this place for us and when he comes he will gather us together with us with him in the city and the city once everything is cleared out below will be set back down on a new earth with new heavens <laughs>